Now, the complex fractions, again, just by definition, not the formal definition, but fraction within a fraction, right? That's what we're looking for, okay? So you're gonna have to identify in the computer system where the long bar is, okay? Because the long bar is basically giving us the bigger fraction, okay, the giant fraction. And then you might have many fractions within that numerator and that denominator of the big fraction, okay? Um, so that's what we gotta look for here. So you notice I tried to make it stand out but not be super obvious because at Alex it's the exact same way, right? So if you notice here, I have like a really bigger yeah. bar than that one right there, right? Yeah. So that's like the mama fractions, okay. and then we have the smaller the baby fractions okay. inside that, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's gonna help us. Now we can do these problems because they are just numbers, right? We don't have any variables in them. Mm -hmm. So you could treat them like just regular numbers and work them in your calculator. You could treat them like regular numbers and do all the operations like you would with regular numbers. The problem is, is I don't want to treat them that way. And the reason is, is because you know me and you know my style, right? If I can do one thing for everything, I'd rather learn that than learn how to do this when it applies to this, this and do yeah, that when it applies right, to that and yeah. so on and so forth. So I like to generalize everything, okay. okay? So when I do these problems, yes, we can do them in the calculator. Yes, I can do them by just flipping, what do you say, multiply by the reciprocal, Simple, right? Yeah, we can do that. But I don't want to use that strategy because when you start putting letters in there, can you type it in your calculator? Nah. Right? No. When you start putting letters in there, when I flip and multiply, things may not happen the way we want them to, right? So it's probably better to use a different strategy. And the strategy is essentially the same like the solving equations. When we see fractions in the equations, immediately we want to just get rid of those fractions, right? Well, here, the way you get rid of the multi or complex fraction is the same idea you just use the common denominator okay but what happens is is it kind of simplifies things so then you have just have a regular fraction okay and you don't have a complex fraction anymore so it makes it complex what you're saying because of the mama bar right exactly okay, pretty, pretty much <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got it, I'll just make it a mama bar. yes okay, mama bar. okay so we see the mama bar which means i need to identify what fraction is in the numerator and what fraction is in the denominator now for here in this problem the denominator fraction is pretty obvious it's five over six right well, you say that top one is four over one then? exactly because it's a whole number we yeah. can write it like that okay. and then what you want to do is you want to find out what is the common denominator between these two fractions so i like to circle those denominators just so that i can keep my focus right so those are the two numbers I'm looking at. And what is the common denominator between those two numbers? Six. Six. Yeah. So then what we do is we're going to multiply by the LCD, which is six, yeah. over one on the top and the bottom. Oh. Even if you have a problem like this one, which we'll get to eventually, you just have to make sure that you use the LCD for every single term you see. Okay? That's the only difference. Multiply by the LCD to every single term. Because really what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by a weird looking six over a weird looking six, aren't I? Yeah. Which is the same as just multiplying by one. So am I really changing the quantity here or the value here? No, right? We're just making it look different. Okay. So when I get this, I end up with what? 24. 24 over one. Mm-hmm. And then the bottom should you should what end happens? Up with five over one, right? Because yes, now, those will reduce. Five, mm -hmm. five over one. one. And what can you do when you have something over one? You can write it as what? Just a whole number. Right. So, <coughs> so the it's 29. 24 is 20. the whole number on the top okay. of the mama bar, and right? Five on the bottom. And then five on the bottom. Now it's no longer complex, right? Okay. It's just yeah. 24 over five. Now you would still keep looking at this, right? And still see if maybe you can keep reducing. Can I keep reducing this one? No. No. So then that's it. We're done for this particular problem. Okay? Will they ever ask you, okay, you can reduce Sometimes you, you can. If you want to make it into like, you know, four and that's not mix, that's not all, reducing. Four, four. Okay. That's like converting. Converting. Okay. So yes, okay. if it tells right. you you have to convert it, then convert it, of course, okay. right? But normally in these definitions, I literally wrote down the definitions that the directions that you'll see. So the directions that you see here just simplify. 
So it never says to put it in a certain form, okay? okay? So if you get down to an improper fraction, it's okay. Yes. You can leave it that way. If you put it into a mixed number, I'm pretty sure the computer will still accept it. Okay. The only time it won't is if you don't see that conversion button. If you don't yeah, see oh, that little box button, over there? Yeah, yeah, if you uh -huh. don't see that over there. If yeah. you don't see that, then yeah, you can't, you you can't okay. type it in there. there right. Okay. So then now here, what is in the, what's on, okay, we're going to keep, I guess, keep using mama bar because <laughs> it helps, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if we see the, the, the mama bar, who's in the top of the mama bar as a fraction? Five, six. Five, 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 five six. Eight. And then at the bottom, who's below the mama bar as a fraction? Four over one again. Right. And then, co coincidentally, they're the same numbers, but. <laughs> That's going to be six again. Would be six again because six and one. So then what would we get for the numerator? Six over one, you have five. Mm-hmm. And what would we get in the denominator? You have 24 over one again. Mm-hmm. Or just? 24. Exactly. Okay. So then will these reduce? Just have nope. 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 So then that's it. It's just going to stay stuck like this. Try the next one. I'm going to pause the video so it doesn't actually record yes. this one. <laughs> yeah, okay, so what you obviously identified the um, LC LCD, right? Yep. So you use, and this one you didn't have to rewrite it because it really is already a fraction over, over a, fraction, a fraction, right? right. Yep. So we're just going to do the 63 over 1 and the 63 over 1, uh, yeah. right? Okay. But then you have to reduce just like you did before, yeah, correct? So 7 goes into itself once, once and then 63, 63 nine times, yeah. and then downstairs. Uh, you got itself once, and then 63 seven times. Seven times. Yeah. So then what do we end up with here after we're finished? So we'll end up with 4 times 9. It's 36 over 1. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom? It's, uh, what, 14 over 1. Mm -hmm. Which is the same as 36 over 14, 14 if we write the top and the bottom as whole numbers, right? But then okay. does that reduce? Mm -hmm. By what? Two, mm -hmm. yep. So then you end up with the 18 over 7, seven like Juan said. Yep. You got it. Good job, bro. Okay, okay, I see you. You slate this on that one. So it's take the number that you get between both of them and multiply it. Over one, though. Over one, To though. both. To both right. of them. Mm -hmm. To both of them. So whatever you get, okay, I see. Now here, this is another topic, right? But it's problem type 2. Yep. It's the same label, right? Complex fractions without variables but it's problem type two. And the only difference here is instead of just having one fraction in the numerator, now you have a sum or a difference of two fractions in the numerator or in the denominator, okay? So this one actually has both, right? It has a difference in the top and a difference in the bottom. Yeah. So now there's four fractions visually going on on this complex fraction. All that means is when you get to the step where you're doing the LCD over one, you're gonna have to do it four different times for every single fraction, okay? Every single term has to be multiplied by the LCD. If you skip somebody, you're not really multiplying by this clever little one anymore, okay? You've changed the value of that fraction. So make sure that you are doing the LCD to every single term, okay? So what would be the LCD? Let's first focus on what are denominators, right? This one, this one, this one, and this one. So what would be the LCD? for all four. I don't think we've even done that before. An LCD for four different numbers. Remember the strategy. Take the biggest one yeah. and start listing his multiples. And the first multiple that all three go into, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. It's gonna have to go into 60. Is it? Is it 60, not 40? Because four is only going to go into this one right, and this 40, one yeah. and this one. Yeah. Two will go into so those same ones, those right? Ones, right? Three go into 60, will go into this one. Yeah. And then five obviously five goes go into, into it, right? Yeah. Yes, so that's going to be the guy. Okay. Okay? So then let's start doing this. 60 over one here. 60 over one there. 60 over one for every single term. It's a lot of writing, but don't skip on it, right? So if I reduce by four here, what do I have left? Uh, 
Uh, 15. Yes. And if I reduce by 2 up here, what am I have left? You got 30 over there. Yep. And then downstairs on the left, if I reduce by 3. You got 20 up top. And then if I reduce by 5 on the right. Uh, 12. Yes. So then let's multiply the leftovers. So we end up with 15 times 3 over 1. So 45. 45 over 1. And then you should have, what, 150 over 1? Mm-hmm. And then 40. And what's that, 2 times, yep, 40. And then, what, 72 minus 72 uh -huh. over 1? And so we don't have to write the ones, right? It's Just helpful. write it without the ones, because we can write them as whole numbers. And so notice that the fraction is no longer complex, right? It's just a regular fraction at this point. And now it actually looks like one of the order of operation problems. So the fraction far breaks up the groups, right? Oh. You've got your numerator and then your denominator. So what do we get in the numerator then? It's a negative something. 105? Negative 105? Mm-hmm. And what do we get in the denominator? It should be, what, a negative 32 down there? Mm-hmm. Now... Can that break down? Or by the numbers, can the numbers reduce? No. Uh, two, five, six. Eight, six. Five, six. Five, six. Yeah. The signs can reduce, right? Okay. It's like a little negative one times mm -hmm. a negative, negative one. Down, so yeah. those will reduce. So they kind of just wipe each other out, right? So you're going to end up with a positive. Mm -hmm. Good. A negative divided by a negative. Essentially, you're like flipping the number line over. You flip it over twice, right? It looks exactly the same as it did before. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, never, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a while since I took a philosophy class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's research that, right? <laughs> Does it have a bigger meaning? Okay. Um, so now this, it's still complex fractions. We still have complex fraction for quite a few more topics. But now they've thrown in the letters, right? So now it says with variables, okay? And then I think you mentioned, asked me that word, you asked me what multivariate meant, right? But univariate just means one variable. Mm -hmm. So if you see an X, you're gonna see an X throughout the whole problem, okay? If you see Ys, they're gonna be all Ys, okay? okay? They're not gonna change A's and B's and C's and all that, okay? So they all have X's in them, but it's the same concept. I know it looks more complex or, or different than with just regular numbers. It's the same idea. Find the LCD, multiply by the LCD over one, and everything will reduce and your fraction will no longer be complex. So again, I'm gonna circle my denominators. What is the LCD between those two denominators? 21x to the Correct, the number's 21, and for the variables, you have to go with the higher variable, right? So we gotta do 21x to the fourth over one and 21x to the fourth over one. Now, when I'm done reducing, cause I noticed in the last few problems, we keep writing over one over one and then writing the whole numbers, right? But you could skip that step because you already know that they're over one. So they're eventually gonna be whole numbers anyway, right? right? Yeah. So as long as you don't have anything else in your denominators besides one, you can just avoid writing those denominators in the next step, okay? Um, it's just saving writing, but visually it's the same thing happening. Okay, so here what will reduce the uh huh the do the, the numbers and the variables separate, right? Okay. So, so seven goes into twenty one. How many? Times. Three. And then if I reduce by an x here, x to the third. we're gonna still have x to the third up there. Good. So then now I'm going to have this entire x minus 5 times this 3x cubed, right? And since all I have at the bottom now are just 1s, I don't need to write that as a fraction anymore, okay? So you've got the big mama bar. And then how do I write x minus 5 times 3x cubed? You're going to write 3x cubed on the outside? 
Mm -hmm. And parentheses would be x minus 5. Exactly. Good. Now let's do the same thing for the bottom. So okay, you're going to cancel that out. 3 goes into 21 7 times. Mm -hmm. x to the fourth power is going to cancel itself out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 7, seven. times x minus 5. Correct. And then just like the numbers, right, with the variables as well, we have to ask ourselves, does this reduce? Yeah. What do, What can I reduce by? You can by? take the x minus 5s out of there. Mm -hmm. Those will reduce. Uh, you can't do anything with the 3x to the third over 7. Right. It's going to stay like that, and that's your answer. You got it. So what is the LCD for this one? X minus 5. Because mm -hmm, they happen to be exactly the same, right? Good. That's nice. <laughs> so this entire factor, right, it's is going to reduce with this one or yeah, cancel? Yeah. It's just going to be 2x to the third, 2x to the third, over 1, mm -hmm. or just 2x to the third. 2x to the third over what? 7x. 7x. And again, you can write the numerator and the denominator as whole numbers now because they're just over ones, right? So then, but can this reduce? You can cancel the x's out. Mm -hmm. So we reduce by an x here. If I reduce by an x there, I still have x squared, right? Yep. So what do we end up with then? 2x squared over 7. Good. Can that reduce anymore? Nah. No. <laughs> okay. Now we get into the other word, right? Multivariate. So it's, again, the same thing. You still have complex fractions. You still have monomials. It's just now there's a bunch of different letters going on. So we have to make sure that when we identify the LCD that we're very careful, right? We make sure we figure out the correct number to use, put every single letter we see in the denominator, and then keep taking the higher exponent for each one, right? So looking at, and again, I like to focus so if I look at this denominator and this denominator, what number would I use for the LCD? Six. Six. Yes, yeah. only variables are P and Q, and yeah. we have oh, to do yeah. fifth. You're right. Yeah, he's right, because that's the bigger one. Is the, to the fifth. Oh, yes, wow. sir. We all learn. <laughs> okay, now when we reduce, what number do we get here? Uh, you're going to have two. Over, it's gonna have, you're going to have thirty at the top. Mm -hmm. The P's cancel, right? And then how many Q's can I reduce? Uh, by two of them. So then how many Q's you would I still two, have? Three, three of them left over. Yes. And so you said what number do I get? You get 30. 15 times 2 is 30. Mm -hmm. And then it's R squared. Mm -hmm. Is that S? Uh-huh, S. S. And then Q to the third. Q to the third. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Right. Now at the bottom... You're going to cancel, cancel. Uh, Q to the 5, let's go ahead and kill that. Uh, P's and all of that's going to stay. So you're going to have 5, R to the 4, S to the 4, and then a P up in there. Mm -hmm. and that's, then that can reduce down. Got yep. 5 and a 30, mm -hmm. 6 at the top. Then bust some R's up. You're going to have two R's left at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You're going to have three S's left at the bottom. And then all that's going to stay like it is. So what's my final fraction going to look like? 6Q to the third. 6Q to the third. And then you can put 1RS squared, R to the one second. 1R to the second, second S. S to the third. Uh-huh. And that's it? Uh, let me look. Hold on. Because you're trying to confuse me. <laughs> 6 over 1 equals 6. You can just write 6 out and write all that sure. stuff like that. That's true. Yeah. You can just leave. Anything else? Because R and S and S is they can't cancel out the R's and the Q's and all of that. Who is not canceled out up here? Oh, P. Uh huh. And do I have P in the bottom? Uh, no, you don't have that. No. <laughs> so make sure you get everybody right. <laughs> These guys and it helps with the colors, right? Because you can see the yeah, red and the purple. <laughs> so I see this guy in purple hasn't been touched, so he needs to remain there, right? And then I see the P down here who hasn't been touched, so he needs to remain in the denominator. Okay, be careful.
you're real likely with the more and more things that are happening, the more likely to oversee something. So okay. how we took the one out of there, right? Mm -hmm. So say exam or, or Alex, mm -hmm. can you take the mama bar out and just write that all together as one straight? As long as all you have in the bottom is a one, yeah. then yes. So if you would have wrote that six Q to the third, R to the second, S to the That would have been wrong because the R You're squared is at the bottom. You're negative X. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Right. In order for you to move them upstairs, yeah, right, you got to change right. them. You got to change the sign. So, so you can't do that. Right. Now you could have done this. You still could have done R to the negative two, S to the negative three, P to the negative one, right? To the top. Yeah. That we could have done, and then we don't have to write the fraction bar okay. anymore because right. nothing would be left downstairs, mm -hmm. right? But the one. Gotcha. Okay. I wouldn't go that far, but you could. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I, I didn't know if that's what was the yeah. end game. And yeah. Them, we Eventually, that. later, you may. Yeah. I don't know that we get problems that are that complex where we'll have to have this times something else and keep going. Um, I don't think that that's going to happen. Even in college algebra, I don't think that'll happen. And if it does, not too often. But keep it in mind in your radar for calculus, right? You never know what's going to happen in calculus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so just keep it in the back of your mind. Now, I kind of actually glossed over this in the previous example, and I didn't mention it, but I should have. And now I have to mention it. Whenever we would have um, polynomials, whether they're binomials, two terms, right? Trinomials, three terms, however many terms we have in a fraction, we can never determine the common denominator unless those things are factored, right? And so if you notice over here in the previous example, I didn't mention anything about the denominators having to be factored before I identified what the LCD was. And that's because these two guys cannot be factored, right? Mm -hmm. X minus five and X minus five. Mm -hmm. So there was no sense in, in, I guess, or to me, I didn't mention it back then because it wasn't necessary, right? However, over here, even though this denominator cannot be factored, now this one can. can. And you have to factor it before you start identifying that common denominator, right? So here, this one is fine the way it is, but here I have to factor that. So I'm gonna write it over here on the left-hand side. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna rewrite the whole fraction just because I don't want it to get too messy and forget where I'm at. So this denominator, I could not factor, so I'm leaving the whole entire fraction exactly the way it was, okay? This numerator, don't mess with it. Which that's what we're going to be, 3 and then x minus 7 at the bottom. Right, yeah. x minus 7. Now that both denominators are factored, now I can identify the LCD. So what would be the LCD for this numerator and this denominator? I would say 3. Just 3? Remember you our strategy. Got, you you got have to put, correct, here. and your LCD, remember what we mentioned, your LCD should always be the factors and the non-common factors and then the distinct right or different same okay, thing yeah the difference right we're supposed to say distinct but same well, thing right multiply <laughs> that whole thing by what three x minus seven over one three x three times, times x yeah, minus three seven three over one yes seven over one. because they have this x minus right. seven in common right. but this three is the distinct that's guy right and we have right. to include them both yeah. good 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 so three times x minus seven over one, and then three times x minus seven over one. Good. So what we'll reduce with this top? Cancel out the x minus seven. So we'll reduce those, then and then the bottom? Uh, you'll cancel out the three times x minus seven. Both, right? Both, Both terms, terms will reduce Both there. So then what will I end up with on top of the mama bar? You'll have three x minus 15. Don't go there yet. Just rewrite them. Oh, okay. Three times x minus five? Yes. And then at the bottom, you'll have x plus five. X plus five. Now, I didn't want you to multiply it in there and distribute, right? Because what if that had been x plus five, right? Then you, if you put here three x plus 15, you're going to have to factor out the three oh, okay, again okay, anyway okay. So, just yeah, to you, reduce, you did, right? Come back and so do leave it. them in all the factored forms, right? Before. Yeah just leave them like that. You don't even need to multiply them out. Okay. The only time we have to multiply them out is later on when we get into equations. Okay, then you can multiply them all out. 
but that'll be after the fractions disappear completely anyway, okay? So this one, you cannot reduce it because those are not the same factors, right? So this one is gonna stay just like that. Okay, good. How many more of these things do we have? Holy moly, there's a bunch. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got eight of them. Okay, here we go with this one. What do you think we should do first? And if I was that, I'd take that, uh, that top equation, the V squared minus mm -hmm. 16V plus 64 and break that down. Right, it's because it's the only one that needs to be broken yeah, down, right? Broken down. Yes, but if there was more people that needed to be factored, we would do those as well, okay? So let's do V over eight, V plus four. And then what does that trinomial factor into? V minus eight, V minus eight. Yep. Oops. Uh, Having a dyslexic moment there. I'm giving out extra points, remember? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, Maria's teacher. Yeah, just, yes. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So what is the LCD here then? Okay, cancel out the mama bar. So the LCD, if I was going, I'm gonna go ahead. You said don't be scared. So I would make it. V minus four and V plus four. Yes, both of over, those are different, one. right? Over one, it has to be over one. So V plus four, V minus four. Does it matter what order I put them no, in? No. Because what? You're going to factor them out anyway. It's going to end up with the same sign Result. no matter how you multiply it. Right. Anyway. So then let's see. The V plus fours will reduce here. Yep. The V minus, minus fours four will reduce right there. there. Yep. And what will we have left over on top of the mama bar? V minus eight times V minus four. Should I write it like that? Yeah, because it's multiplied. Mm -hmm. But what's multiplied? I know the V minus four is multiplied. Is this whole thing or just the eight multiplied? The whole thing. The whole thing. How do I symbolize that? Right. right. Don't forget those guys, right? Okay, copy that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Right. Now at the bottom, what am I left with? Parentheses V minus eight. Mm -hmm. V minus eight mm -hmm. and times V plus four. Mm -hmm. yep. We have three of them now, right? Yep. But because everything's over one, we don't have complex fraction right. anymore. Okay. You can cancel out the one minus eight. Yes, just one. Yeah, one top with one yeah. bottom, yeah. right? Yep. And then what about these factors? Can those reduce? No, nope, they're different signs. Right. So do I need the parentheses in the numerator? Yeah. Yes. I need them. Yeah. Why? Because you're multiplying. So multiplying by what? By the whole factor. By, factor, by what? What whole factor? By one. By one. So you're saying I have to write this? Uh. I mean, why in do you need face. it on the top? Because it's That's like, what I asked you. I said, do I need the parentheses in the top? Okay. Oh, I thought you said, <laughs> you, did. I thought you said the bottom. No, you don't need them at the top. No, correct. I correct. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the bottom. No, no, no. no. The top. <laughs> At the top, you don't need them. They're dull, though. You're right. They're right, right. right. Yes, Good. But in the bottom, you do, and you're right. right. You and then you explained why. Good. <laughs> That's going to must mean something later. That's going to mean something later. Well, we've right? been doing that, right? I mean, yeah. I'm just saying the same things I've oh, been saying the whole right time okay. we've been doing these modules, right? Yep. Do we need the parentheses? Do we not need the parentheses? Is that going to matter later? Because you, you yeah. keep digging it in us. It's going to yes. matter. Okay. It does matter. <laughs> it does. <laughs> That's why I'm digging it in, trying That's to get that asking. habit, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good, good, good. Try the bottom one. I won't do it. Let me do the video so you can try it. And then we'll see what we get. <laughs> 